Hi everyone, this is Cloud. This is a spoiler-free review and my first impressions of 2023's Lords of the Fallen, the new dark fantasy Soulsborne genre RPG from Hexworks, the makers of 2014 Lords of the Fallen. I'll go through the ins and outs of the story and gameplay mechanics and even give you some pros and some cons I think you should know about maybe before you purchase it. The story takes place about 1,000 years after 2014's Lords of the Fallen and the demon god Ardir has been set free and hopes to cloak the world in darkness. A new warrior has risen to bring back light to these beacons that will defeat the demon god's plans. Along your journey, you will come across various NPCs and fragments of the past that will tell you more about the world. The game has you, the player, alternate between two worlds during Lords of the Fallen. The world of the living, the axiom, and the world of the dead, the umbral. With the help of your blue lantern, you will be able to travel between the two worlds of the dead and use it to navigate areas, exploration challenges, and even find powerful loot items. The longer that you are in the Umbral, aka World of the Dead, you'll start to accumulate a sort of wanted meter indicated by this eyeballs multiplier. And the higher the multiplier gets, the more enemies that will spawn in and the more powerful the enemies will be that will begin to hunt you down. If you do die in the Umbral, then it's pretty much game over and you're dead. But if you die in the Axiom and then die, it's sort of like you you get a second life to redeem yourself and come back if you don't die. And you can even use these vestiges, aka bonfires, for soul spans, and you can come back to the Axiom once more. You carry around a blue lantern, which will let you travel between the Axiom and Umbral. When you are in the Umbral, there is some high risk, high reward that does happen, and the longer you are in the Umbral, the more hostile things will become. You will enter the Umbral to navigate through puzzles and the environment and you'll also find some really good loot as well. Another thing I want to add is that if you do willingly use the blue lantern to go into the umbral then you will lose half of your health bar. You can regain your health by hitting enemies. Graphics are phenomenal and the dark fantasy aesthetic really shines in the Unreal Engine 5. I played this on PlayStation 5 in performance mode and thought the game looked really great. The combat. The combat in this game is a lot like other Souls games where you have parrying, dodge, and heavy and light attacks. You can also use spells and do finishers on staggered enemies. The music in this game is really eerie and I actually loved it. I felt very much at home in my Dark Souls-like world in Lords of the Fallen. The pros. The pros. This game has a lot of content and even though it's not a true open world game, there is a ton of exploration and customization options here for whatever look or play style you want. The dodge mechanics in this game are extremely forgiving and I would actually recommend Lords of the Fallen for any new players to the Souls-like genre. The cons. The game for what it is in combat and exploration, it lacks in its storytelling and me knowing what exactly is going on without being very vague at times during the game. I wish there was more lore and storytelling in this game, but that's just kind of how Souls-like games go. Overall, this is a good game for what it is, I would give Lords of the Fallen a solid 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and hit the subscribe button. Are you playing Lords of the Fallen? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, bye.